All right. It has been a rough week in chess this week in my training. Uh, I'm just getting completely wiped out. <laughs> this is part of the journey. This is part of the process. I'm well aware of that. Um, I'm bouncing back and forth now between level four and level three on the computer. I've got five or six friends that I am playing with as well. Grandmaster Smirnoff says, you know, play with friends, play with humans, and use the computer as well. It's a good training in objectivity of your chess, and I hate the computer. I, I am so disgusted. I, I am so angry. It's miserable. It's like I don't even know how to play this game. I don't even know why I'm making these videos. Uh, you, I, I'm not making these videos because I'm the expert. I can guarantee you. I'm making these videos with the idea of sharing my journey. And right now, I am on a negative slope. It is difficult, man. My psychology is just messed up. And I'm actually going to show you a game that I had when I went back to level three to show you that my psychology is still messed up from being so clobbered on level four. It's, it's not fun. It's not fun. It's a necessary thing. I know. We all lose thousands of games. I get it. But so, I, I mean, I am happy that I'm playing the black pieces. I am happy that I got this win. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play. I, I am. I try to study openings and get the main lines, et cetera. And there's not one time, not one time in 50 ugly tries that I ever get the opening that I can play the way I see played, whether from the books or from the YouTube videos. Nobody plays that opening that way. It, it is so frustrating because, unfortunately, I get to the point in the game to where I don't know what to do. And it's just bizarre. The computer just waltzes all over me. It crushes me in strategy, in tactics, in end game, in middle game, in opening. I, I, it's it's razzle dazzling, but it's also extremely frustrating. So, I threw out all my studies on all my openings. I said, "Forget about it. I'm going to play something I haven't played for months and months and months and months. I'm going to do a Ruy Lopez." <laughs> Forget the King's Indian and forget the Carl Kahn and forget the cotton picking Joe Bob of London or the London or the uh, what's the uh, I'm so frustrated. Like the Gioco Piano, the Italian game, forget all that noise. I'm sick of all of them at this point, right? See, this is part of the learning process. So I'm going to share with you my psychology, my frustrations, my victories, my thrills, etc. Right now, I am in a fluster. Bishop c4, he's going to play the Italian. So I go, well, all right. I have no idea what to do with the Italian as black pieces in any level of depth, right? So I'm going to have to resort to just basic chess fundamentals, if I even remember them. Because at this point, I am so hopping mad at myself and at not being able to practice what I'm learning because nothing opens the openings. Nobody and nothing opens the openings the way we're shown in the books or on the YouTube videos. It's astonishing. And I have seen that complaint in the comments <laughs> of several of the YouTube creators. We say, yeah, you show me this opening, you make it look so easy, and I've been trounced 113 times with it. Well, hey, I'm joining you in that club. Me too. <sighs> wow. I mean, wow, you know. Perhaps it is just a matter of practice. I don't know. Now, I'm going to follow suit. I'm not, I've just decided, look, just keep this basic simple, just fundamental. Just stay solid. Don't do anything fancy like this idiot. And now you can see what he's doing. And I'm going, how on this green earth can I fall for this so fast? Ah, 
cold water. That feels good. From all my parched throat, from yelling and gurgling and squealing and screaming and hoping and all that. So the F7, that is the weak square, right? You've got to keep this in mind with the Italian, <laughs> with the Gioco Piano, man. And I'm going, oh, my goodness. I'm already, I've already pressed the pawn too far. I can't block it by putting it on the six, E6. So what do I do? I say, well, I can go bishop E6. I'll just trade the bishop. That's all I can do at this point. I don't want to, but I will. And sure enough, he takes the bishop. Okay. So the bishop is gone. So now I don't have that combination to worry about. And the only thing I can take it with is that pawn. Right? And now the knight will take e6, threatening the queen, forcing me to go to queen e7. And here the computer just slapped me silly. It said, yeah, you're right. You're not very good at chess yet. You got to keep, you got to do a lot more studying and a lot more practice and a lot more playing because Bubba, that was the wrong move. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but there was a much better move. Um, Bishop should have taken F2 immediately because the king. The king can't take the bishop. If the king takes the the king's got to move to f1. Because if the king takes the bishop, I've got this. Check and I get the piece. Right? And I would have been up a piece had I paid attention. Now, here's the thing. I am so flustered from getting so trounced with level four. And yeah, all you higher rated players, you can go ahead and laugh and mock at me all you want. At one point, you did too. Don't lie to me. I know. You've gone through this process already, and you're going at from the top end showing your greatness. The rest of us, I'm showing you the journey through the agony of learning how to do better chess. That's the difference between us. Because I'm going to try, if I have the patience, to get just as good as you are, and then I'm going to make you eat your words when I come and play you. I'm talking years down the road, I hope. But anyway, so any anyway, basic tactic. I didn't see it. I didn't see that. I saw the chance to threaten the knight and chase it off. I also was thinking it's going to go either here wipe a knight a pawn out or here and fork my king and, and rook. So the queen prevents both of those. That was my thinking, right? So again, notice my thinking though. See, this is where I'm flustered and I have to, uh, yeah, it, we have good days and we have bad days. We have good weeks and we have bad weeks, right? And this was a horrible week for me. One of my worst weeks this year, in fact, my worst week this year, so far, and I'm only five weeks into this year. I didn't want a worse week for another couple of months. <laughs> so much for wishing, huh? So I'm thinking passively, right? That's a passive move. Yeah, without that tactic. And I mean, I had it. There it is. That's his weak square on the king side. So anyway, it's all good because... We are still doing okay, and now the knight will take my bishop, the c5. And so I take the knight. Now, honestly, um, in a way, I have that square pretty good. I'm blocking his center. He's not going to be able to come and challenge me very easy. So I got looking at this and I said, yeah, I can put my knight to here to blockade the pawns, but it's still got a bump. So it's not a permanent outpost. So for right now, that's a waste of time. There's no point in helping him strengthen his center and me weaken mine. 
So the Knight won't play for right now. I do have a couple of options. I'm really seriously considering long uh, castle. That that It'll put the Rook right across from the Queen, for one thing. And uh, this Pawn's already gone, so there's a great file here. Once I castle, I can bump my Rook over, right? I can kick my Knight out, come up into here. So... I'm breathing a somewhat sigh of relief. I'm thinking, okay, not bad, not, not sensational, but not bad. Well, he castles. And I said, well, now this can be a really whoop de doo of a game if I castle long, right? Because that means the war is on. I'm going to go ahead and keep developing, get the pieces out, and see. And, and I began to get a little hope here. Through the exchange, he didn't get the exact... Uh, tactics that he wanted, but he was able to exchange some pieces. However, he exchanged all of his active pieces. Now that's encouraging because I've got three pieces developed. He's got nothing. So I'm thinking, all right, slow down. Hold on. Wait. When? Now, and uh, not necessarily a close center. It doesn't have to be really. It, it helps if it does. It's I have decent control over the center at this point. So should I begin setting up an attack on the king's side? That, that was a thought in my mind. This frame of... of uh, Position says seriously the potential's there, not before you castle. Not before you castle, Kerry. You cannot attack in the center. You cannot kingside attack. You cannot queenside attack until you castle. So that's got to happen. As in right now, right? Here he comes, and so I do castle. And I decided, okay, let's go long. Let's go along and just at least keep my eye across from the queen. That can't be wrong. And bishop g5, here we go. So he's getting his pieces. He puts a pin, pretty decent one. Okay, it's all good. That doesn't bother me a whole lot. I can bump the h6 and... And then he came way back here. That's too far back. This, this told me. Now, see, the computer's trying to play like a human, right? And on this level, you know, I don't even know if I'm this rated, higher rated. I, I got fortunate that it, it made a weak retreat move really sincerely. It should never have gone back past there. Okay? So. So with that in mind, it did come back here. We'll have players who do that with us, so it's good. Let's let's see what the huh, – I was getting ready to say what the correct mindset is. I don't have a correct mindset this week. I am so flustered, it's ridiculous. However, this uh, – a little bell started going off in my head here. I said, okay, now I will attack, Right? Because, I mean, he's, he's got options to bring his queen, not, not to hear here anymore. He can get his queen out, and he can connect his rooks, right? But he castled this side, so he needs to get his queen out. Uh, he didn't fee in Keto, and his, his uh, light square bishop is gone. His dark square bishop's already out. So he does have the ability, if he's going to really hurry, to start pushing the queens, put the rooks and the queen over there, or the pawns, and pushing the queen side pawns, I meant to say. So we could get a queen side attack. I'm not really on any one side or the other. Uh, at this point, I'm pretty even distributed with the pieces. Technically, more of his pieces are on the queen side. That's why I'm saying, you know, when you do castle opposites, then you want to attack the opposite sides, right? He castled that way, so that's the way I'm going to want to attack. And that's not a hard, fast rule. It, it isn't. I mean, it, I castled long, so yeah, come and get me on this side. 
Uh, but I've got weaknesses all over the place over here. I mean, my pawn structure just sucks. And that was discussed. I've got, I've got the isolated pawn here that, that I've got to babysit. So, um, yeah, not the best, not the worst, but I decided here and now. I said, okay, um, long-term plan. Throw those pawns up here just as fast as you can, but don't do it without the pieces behind them. you got to have those pieces. That, that's just how it works. I didn't invent this. That's how it works. So I've got to get my rooks over there. So that was the plan. And and then I told myself, now, see, when I was playing level four, I would come up with a plan, and in two moves, he obliterated it. I, I, I don't get it. I, I mean... Blow me away, Batman. I'm, wow. So I had to switch plan, and he obliterated it. And in the meantime, I lost a piece. I blundered the piece. I got clobbered with the tactic. And, and I'm going, wow, do I even know how to play this game? And that happened game after game. So I ended up having no plan whatsoever. I, I My last five losses, I was just moving pieces. I, I couldn't even think. I shouldn't have played those last five games. I was too frustrated. We've been there. We'll be there again, just so you know. And I promise you, anybody that's rated 2,200 has had just this kind of week. And if they tell you otherwise, they're lying through their teeth to you. Because this is the chess process. It just, my psychology is such that I have to say, look, everyone does this and you're no different. You're not special. You're not the special chosen anointed of the future chess greats. So you just shut up and get through your soldiering and you get through your training, pal, and you get ready to lose a lot of games. That's hard on me. It is. I'm too sensitive. I have to toughen myself up psychologically for that. So here's the plan. Prepare and get those and get this knight on that outpost. And he's right there. Not just yet, though. Not just yet. So how do you proceed? Well, he kind of helped me. By coming to here, I said, all right, bop the bishop. Now, the cool thing is it limits the dark squared bishop, you know, those pawns. That's nice. However, there's a queen down here. And she's got this diagonal. I can't just keep pressing the pawns. So now I must prepare better. Slow down, Carrie. Okay, A3. Slow down, Carrie. Knight D4. Because his knight came out, he's not going to be able to chase me away with the pawn. Okay, that was my thinking. So pull that trigger now. Get the knight prepped. Okay. And I still, actually, I still might have done that too early. Uh, he really does have a splendiferous outpost right here. He could move to next time and then push the pawn. And then I'm really not going to have a good game with that knight, right? <sighs> Again, hindsight's better than foresight. Boy. And now he goes A4. Now, it, it's giving me an extra move. It's trying to play like a human, right? It should have just done A4. I get all that. I, I understand that. But <laughs> the fun thing is, now I get my rook. And the computer didn't like this either. The computer kept telling me, dude, king B8. That's where you need to be. And it is correct. So, again, I'm hasty. And see, this is part of my problem on level four. Uh, in in sit in trying to sit back and analyze and you know get my psychology straightened out in my head. Uh, patience. I make moves way too fast. It's crazy because I'm playing 15 minute with three increment or five increment or whatever, and I finish and I still have 11 minutes on the clock. Well, that's way too fast. I get that, but speed chess. Everybody's into speed. You know, we gotta hurry. The faster that you do it. And I suspect that's part of my problem. I'm saying, all right, hold on. So I'm going to give it a shot again this next week, and I'll see how I do. Well, actually, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to be on level four for several months, is my suspicion. 
sincerely. And um, some friends that I'm playing, uh, we're we're having good games. Uh, they're beating me as well. And so that's very helpful because they really don't play like the computer, which is good. <laughs> but they're better than the computer against me, which is not so good. <laughs> I mean, wow, you know, that's how it is. Okay, so anyway, rook to d8, and guess what? Knight to d5, yeah. Man, that's an output. That's a great outpost, right? So knight d5, so this is going to be a battle, and, and I just said at this point, chop it off. I, I don't even... Okay, it's true. I do want to do a kingside attack, and I'm going to, and I do. And it would be cool if I could have that knight, but I'm not going to because there ain't no way I'm going to start playing reaction chess or defensive chess at this point. I'm evenly distributed. I can focus and run and hit. So I went ahead and traded off. That was my thinking at that point. Just chop it off. Done, no more worry. Okay, so this leaves him a passed pawn, but it's way too advanced, so it's honestly not dangerous yet. And now G4. This was the reason I moved my rook over. And again, the computer was saying, no, King B8, you're not playing this right. but I don't play like a computer. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I, I know when you do castle long, you do want to get your king to B8. That is, that's accurate. That's true. But I, I'm so determined. How do I justify myself? I can't say the computer's wrong. All I can say is I don't play like the computer and I'm not being objective. <laughs> I, I am not interested in being objective in chess at this point. I want to just try to learn the game and learn how to win and get some wins, you know, so I keep saying, yeah, this is a fun game. This last week has not been fun for me. Not at all. It's been close to torture for me. And I, I'm probably making way too big a deal about this. It's not that bad for those of you who are beginners until you start losing every game you play for the next month, like I'm doing. And then it, you know, you have to second guess yourself. But really, nothing here is coming at me really hard, fast, and furious. I will, I will put the king to b8. But man, I need to attack. That was my thing. Okay. Right or wrong, that's what I was doing. So, and so I come to g4, and that rook helps me so that the queen doesn't just simply take it and go check and put me out of commission. I need both those pawns. That's what I believed, right, at the time. So I've got to keep those two pawns. Well, here we go. C3, right? And, and I saw that. So two moves down the road. Well, three moves down the road. He went ahead and, well, four or five moves down the road. He went ahead and moved his knight, and then he did something here, and we exchanged. And now, sure enough, he's going to kick my knight off. So... I'm already committed, and, and I really want to keep these guys together, these pawns, if I can. They'll, they're much stronger that way. I've got both rooks on the G and the H, and I've got the queen that can come flying in here to H4 when necessary. So um, I, I really don't have any good squares now either. Maybe there, maybe I should have went there. What did I do? Oh, I sacrificed the knight. Yeah, I sacked the knight. I said, okay. And, and I do want my pawns to be able to crack the king open also, right? The king is like in a, in a tortoise shell, and you have to crack the tortoise shell. It's an eggshell. Break the eggshell and get to the yolk, which is the king. You got to break that cover. You got to break through the fortress. So one of the best ways is to sack a piece. So here's my piece sack in my king side. Yes. And the computer didn't fault me for this. 
G took, and I said, hot dog, the G file is now open for business. And I went ahead and G took and discovery check. Right there. I also have a good pawn covering the G2 and E2 squares. The rook isn't going anywhere to help up above on the second rank. If, if the second rank needs protected, it's going to have to be the queen unless he takes time to see he's got to move the queen in order to move the rook, and he's got to move the bishop to get a rook here to guard the second rank. It'll be much easier for him to just pop the queen and, and get rid of the bishop out in the field so that he can guard the second rank if that needs to be. That, I was trying to work through all the logistics. So at this point, I was feeling pretty good. I've got a direct attack on the king, an open file, king h1, queen h4, and <sighs> carry, carry, carry. Ah, uh, that's a blunder. <laughs> and you go, you know, I, I, I'm just saying, I swear to goodness, I am going to learn how to stop blundering. I, I'm not kidding. I'm working hard on tactics puzzles. Not hard, steady. I'm working steady on tactics puzzles. I have a tactics book I'm beginning to go through. I recognize where my real weakness in my chess game is, and I am addressing it. But holy go to sleep, nightmare, Batman. And the computer let me have a break. Perhaps trying to play like a human. It flubbed up too. It went bishop e3. Now, can you see what it should have done? <laughs> it's obvious now. See, I'm thinking queen in. Rooks, crash the gate, doing 98, let that trucker roll. The dumb pawn, carry, the dumb pawn. Carry, I left the pawn behind. Carry, wake up, I left the pawn behind, and it's not connecting the queen and the rook. But I do have that rook, and I do have this pawn covering that square. Is there something good I can do with that? His queen should have taken that. If the queen would have taken f3, I would have had nothing, man, because I've sacrificed a piece. I'm a piece down. And technically speaking, I, this is weak. Um, my king is nude. I, he could really walk me through the center, right? So I got a break. That's why I say I'm not showing you this game to show you what a fantastic chess player I am. We all know I'm not at this point. I'm on the way to hopefully becoming that. And many, many, many hundreds of you are also. You guys have asked me. you got to start showing us more of your games and your thinking process because we're much more on your level than if you were a grandmaster or an IM or even a master. And you're right. But you guys are all better than I am. I almost feel like I have no business making these videos. I need to be watching you guys. So this is crazy beans. And so I went to rook g2. Not rook g1. Uh-uh. I want to guard. It's the h pawn I'm after. That's where the checkmate's going to happen. But I'm covered at rook g2. And then bishop came to f4, the only thing it could possibly do. And if I remember right, oh, yeah, I took it with the queen. I was going to take it with the pawn, and then I said, no, 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 dork. Take it with the queen. Man, queen. My, part of my problem is I use too many pawns. I rely too hard on the pawns and not the pieces. And then I think his last move was something silly like d4. And you can ignore that because there's the checkmate. So I barely got a win. And I got lucky that I got a win. Quite frankly, if the majority of us watching this right now are between 800 beginners, raw beginners, and 1,500, 
then you're going to get lucky like this sometimes. Your opponents in that range, in our range, believe me, I'm not up on the mountaintop as some kind of a chess guru talking down upon you on my greatness and glory and look how splendiferous I am and ululate over my chess prowess. I'm showing you the climb up the ugly mountain to get there. And I'm hoping you're coming along with me. If not, that's your issue. It's all good. It's all good. In the meantime, I'll entertain you as well as show you the journey. So, so there is my checkmate, but I got a lucky break. But isn't that part of it? I mean, you know, <laughs> we can't see every move. We can't play every excellent, good, solid move, and neither can our opponent. So the rule, the lesson, the hope here is just Keep looking at everything and try to figure out a plan. Now, I, now I, I went with the plan, oh, I mean, what was it, halfway through the middle game, maybe? Perhaps at the beginning of the middle game is when this particular board position showed me the plan. And I know the grandmasters, they're real sticklers for this, and rightly so. They say, look, in the long term, You've got you've got little skirmishes and stuff you have to take care of in the game, but if you can, the sooner you can get a plan, and then whatever it takes, do that plan. In the long run, it will uh, sweeten up your chest. It will strengthen your chest. Now, when they say that, they don't mean just for five weeks of work. Harry, and I'm saying this out loud for me. I, I'm pretending I've started all over, right? I am a beginner going through this journey. That's what that that's the only way I can psychologically handle this. So I'm not gonna beat myself up too bad if I can't beat level four just yet. I started my journey January this year. I'm giving myself five years to defy the chess odds, right? So this is a win. I'll take it. it. It's not. It's not the case of the win. What I liked about this is I came up with a pretty good plan because the board position allowed me to, and no matter what, everything I did was for that plan, and it worked. Now, had this been level four, I would have lost eighteen moves ago. None of my plans worked out this week in level four. None of them. No, no, I was I was resigning games after 10 moves because I was so disgusted because bam, here came a tactic I didn't see. Bam, bam, bam. He he posted three pawns and I couldn't move any of my knights or my bishops. And there was nothing I could do. I felt like a boa constrictor had wrapped itself around me and crushed me, man. So I just resigned. I, I, I can't even do this. See, psychologically. Now, I get it. That's the wrong approach. Yeah, we are all going to go through this self-doubt phase. I see it in comments, on videos of every YouTuber, Naraditsky's, Smirnoff's, Nelson's, Bonzea, Ramirez, is that his name? Uh, oh, apologize, I'm not trying to insult anyone. But anyway, I see the comments too, and they're all saying, well, yeah. I, and there are some people, fortunately, who can use this material, and they bump themselves up 100 ELO rating points. Fabulous. We all will but not all at the same time, and certainly not all at the same speed. I have a handicap. No, not from my neck up. Ha! Even though that's true. Yeah, baby. No, I'm older. I'm much older. So defying the chess odds at this point is going to mean some serious determined effort on my part that you guys may not have to go through as strenuous as I am. Uh, life has just not given me the golden path down an easy, oh, I've got 17 years of pure chess. Uh, life happens when you're making plans. I've heard that saying before. That's what's happened to me. But I still love the game, and I'm still here, and I'm still working on it. And I've been here for, what, 11, 12, 13 years. Sometimes I feel embarrassed because 
I should have got there by now, but there is no time scale. It's just improving yourself, enjoying the process, even though this week I did not. I will not lie to you. This week was not fun for me. You will have those weeks. Just let me say, don't let that stop you or discourage you. Okay? Because if an old fart like me can do this, then so can you younger, crisp, energetic, awesome people. If I can do this, you can do this. I'm going to give it my best shot. I want to see what I've got. For real. <sighs> Good luck. I'm going to have some ups and downs. So there it is, you guys. Thanks for all your support, your love, your support, your fun. Um, friendship. Be friends with everybody. Be happy. Life is good. Life it life really is good. The alternative sucks. So, I mean, after all, every day you wake up is a joy. Go look at the sunrise and enjoy yourself. Enjoy this magnificent, gorgeous, beautiful earth with all of its fantastic trees and rocks, mountains and meadows, wildlife animals and tame animals and other people. So, all right, I'm done. I'm getting preachy now. Don't mean to, but thanks for watching. I will be back with more. Uh, this Sunday is the Super Bowl, and I am going to take a day off from chess, and I am going to go watch the Super Bowl. Uh, it's, it's my one day of the year where I get a splurge, and so I have, you know, spare ribs and stuff like that. Uh, I admit I indulge for one day on the Super Bowl. I'm not a real football fan, not a real big football fan. I didn't watch any of the games during the season. But just so you know, and if you disagree with this, that's great. We can have a conversation. It'll be fun. But I am in a poll for Kansas City. Mahomes, I mean, that that could be a dynasty just like San Francisco used to be. So, But both teams are tough. It'll be a great Super Bowl, I'm thinking. So I will catch up to you as I can. I am going to do a live crime of me tomorrow, Saturday. I will do a live tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I have some other... Uh, I'm going to do some more tactics and traps and stuff. That's fun. I think you guys are enjoying those. I'm really enjoying them because they kind of help sharpen your vision. Well, your vision, mine, I'm as dull as a dead dodo knife, but that's okay. I'm working on it. I'm grinding against the grindstone. So, all right, I got to go. Thank you. See you tomorrow.